stop the FOMO. You're ready to buy a next generation console, PlayStation 5 or Xbox Series X, and you're hearing that OLED TV is the best gaming experience, namely the LG C10. But your gaming friends are telling you, whoa, 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 what about Burnin? Burnin, you do a little research and maybe Burnin isn't a problem. You're seeing some publications saying, well, for normal uses, Burnin is no longer a risk. Or is it? Remember, you're not the normal user. Today, we talk about whether OLED TVs have Burnin risk for hardcore gamers. We're talking power users. So let's set the world on fire and see what burns. Before we jump into this video, I want to get out of the way that this video is not for the normal OLED TV user. The readers of CNET, Digital Trends, Forbes, Consumer Reports, those readers are mainstream TV users and maybe they might have a lower risk. You on the other hand are a hardcore gamer. So let's talk about, wait a minute, hardcore gaming, how's that different? First, hardcore gamers power users. We're talking people who ask me this question all the time. Wait, wait, I plan to gain next generation PlayStation 5 or Xbox Series X four hours a day, maybe six, maybe eight. And on weekends, I'm running straight through six in the morning until 10 p.m. Sunday night. The advice that you've read to this point does not apply to you. Whole different ball game. Power users, hardcore gamers, power gamers who play these games on an OLED TV 12 hours straight. Very few breaks, same game over and over. This is a whole different group of people and the advice is very much different. So you'll be greatly disappointed if you don't understand the OLED burn-in risk for your gaming needs. As many of you may know, my mantra is Use case, use case, use case. And in this case, in this video, we're going to talk about the use case for the hardcore gamer. The gamer that goes through controllers once every two months, you gotta buy a new controller because you worn it out, right? Or the user that knows full well, they'll be playing the same game six hours a day, quite possibly for three months straight every day. That's a different user. That user, needs to understand the true risk of burning for their use case and that's what we'll dive into today. So knowing that this video is for the hardcore gamer, hopefully you have a better understanding of what you need to do to take precautions when you do get an OLED or if you get an OLED after this video. And I'm not saying that OLED is not for you, but let's research the use case first and we're going to dive into the one bit of data out there that is relevant to you. And that's the Artings OLED research. I've linked it below. And specifically, Artings ran six LG C7 OLED TVs running different content over the course of over 100 weeks, right? So during the course of 100 weeks, more than 100 weeks, that's about almost two years the Artings did this. And specifically, we're going to look at the two video games that they ran 20 hours a day every day for almost two years. FIFA 18, Call of Duty, World War II. We'll start with the bad news, FIFA 18. As you can see, the burn has started to appear. But the Call of Duty, two years later, wait, there's no burn in, or no sign of burn at least, right? What does that tell us? So. After you've read the research, or if you're curious about the research entails, please go into the detail of their testing procedure. But at the end of the day, I pulled out a couple of conclusions. First, the reason why FIFA turned out to have the most burn-in was persistent images that were bright and did not change its position, right? These are static images in the same place all the time. Check out where the burn-in is, the bottom two corners and the top. That's where the persistent display is at all times, but that's not enough. Persistence is not enough. It's also very bright. Unlike the FIFA 18, look at Call of Duty. 
Yeah, they have some displays, but it's not as bright. And also, lastly, how long do these static images last during the course of a game? Well, in FIFA, it's for the entire game, but in Call of Duty, as you notice, there are different scenes, different gameplay where those static images may or may not appear all the time. So FIFA 18 is like the perfect storm for burning, which leads to what you need to assess. Now we get to your use case. Before buying an OLED TV, you always need to ask yourself these three questions. And the three questions are, one, what type of game do you play? Two, how bright does it get? And three, how long do you play it? So let's start with one. Well, what type of game do you play? Specifically, are there persistent static images in your games? Next Generation Gaming, there's FIFA 2021 coming up, and we have a couple of gameplay scenes that it appears that, well, those two bottom boxes are still there, as well as the top score box. This still represents a burden risk, but beyond FIFA, but let's look at Madden 2021. There appears to be a bright box score on top, or something relevant to today's players, Apex Legends. There are complaints that there is a burden in the bottom left-hand squad box. Why is that? Check it out, persistent image. So the question number one is, the game that you like to play, the type of games you play, are there persistent static images throughout the game? But that's not enough. The second question is, how bright does it get? If you look at Call of Duty, they have heads up displays, right? These persistent displays, but it's not very bright. The opacity, right? How bright that individual persistent static image is, is not too bright at all. That's very helpful, unlike FIFA 18 or the Apex Legends squad box that can get fairly bright throughout the course of the game. Which leads us to the third question, how long will you be playing these games or how long do these images, the static images, stay in the game while you play? So the three question then is, what kind of game? Do they have static images? How bright? Well, how bright do these static images get? And how long? Either how long the static image stays on the screen while you're playing or how long do you play? At the end of the day, it's cumulative. Remember that when you have an OLED TV, over the course of ownership of an OLED, if you have the same static image over and over and over, it adds up. We're talking thousands and thousands of hours of bright static images that by the end of 9,000 hours, oh, you're gonna have major burn-in. But the question is, how long would it take for you to get 9,000 hours of that one bright image? Because LG does say that it's cumulative, right? Meaning an hour here, an hour there, and an hour there, it ends up adding up to 9,000 hours, but maybe over the course of 10 years, well, over 10 years, hey, it's not so bad. But if you have 9,000 hours over two years, well, you'll be fairly disappointed <laughs> because you will get burn in. And this is why the CNETs and the digital trends and the consumer reports of the world advise you to vary your content, right? When you vary content, it does two things. One, it gives the TV a chance to balance the pixels, display other colors and other brightness levels in the same spots that you had these persistent static images. And more importantly, extends the life of the TV because you didn't accelerate the 9,000 hours into the one spot, right? And lastly, when assessing your risk, remember, next generation gaming titles have unique risks that previous generations did not, and that's HDR gaming. Specifically, HDR is high dynamic range. So in a game, you're going to have much brighter specular highlights. So in certain scenes, wow, that's great. The sun is brighter, the reflections are brighter, the water coming up is brighter. That looks realistic and very immersive. But in a persistent static display, if developers choose to make it brighter because they need to call your attention, how much life do you have left? Or how much life does your squad have left? Or the score in a soccer game? Or the score in a football game, right? Those bright highlights become a huge burning risk if it's a persistent static display. HDR gaming has a higher level of brightness than regular gaming in the past. With HDR, suddenly, 
your TV is pumping out much more nits than normal. And worse still, if developers pump up the brightness in those static displays to give it that pop and wow factor, unfortunately, that will raise your burn-in risk for those static areas. And this is the part where next generation gaming does pose an additional risk because of HDR. But let's just say you don't care. You're a gamer, you're going to play FIFA 2018 or FIFA 2021 until the TV just fails completely. There is one last factor that you might wanna consider and that's the warranty. LG's manufacturer warranty or Sony's manufacturer warranty or maybe Vizio's manufacturer warranty and the option of an extended warranty. So let's talk about manufacturer's warranty, right? In the US, you have three OLED makers to consider, LG, Sony, and now Vizio. Across the rest of the world, you might have Panasonic, Philips, and Hisense maybe. The question becomes, what are their policies for burn-in? What does the maker's warranty actually say? LG has publicly stated, no. Burn-in is not covered under warranty, and CNET has confirmed that as recently as December 2019 in an article they reached out to LG and Sony, both have said, no, our manufacturer warranty does not cover burn-in. Although LG has made exceptions on a case-by-case -case basis, <laughs> as you can see in their support comments, but don't count on it, right? It's possible that if they know you're a gamer, they most likely will not cover you for obvious reasons. The reality is don't rely on any warranty coverage because at this point, it looks like it's a no. Unless they specifically spell it out, we cover burn-in or we guarantee against burn-in, don't believe it. Don't listen to rumors, hunt it down. And I did link LG's support responses below. Now I did try to find the word burn-in and LG's terms and conditions, and I couldn't find it. So if you guys find it, let me know in the comments below. I couldn't find it to link it for you. And my opinion is if they stay silent on something, assume it's a no. On the other hand, extended warranties are different. We'll start with the one warranty that actually spells out yes. And that's Geek Squad extended warranty from Best Buy. I have linked it below, and if you see the paragraph that I'm showing you right now, it does specifically cover burn-in. As a matter of fact, no other extended warranty specifically spells out the word burn-in as a covered event. But more importantly, in looking at both Square Trade and Assyrian, the answer is actually no, they've said that since burn-in occurs due to out of normal viewing conditions, it is not covered under warranty by most manufacturers or by your Square Trade protection plan. Assyrian similarly says, this protection plan is designed to cover mechanical and electrical failures due to normal use. As screen burn is traditionally not covered by the manufacturer, it would also not be covered by our plan. And this is the critical word to remember, normal use. This is used often, that's a problem for me, mostly because LG this year has really been promoting the C10 as an OLED for gaming, right? If you look at their website, oh, all these gaming features, but apparently you can't game too many hours because, well, we're not gonna cover burn-in, which is a natural result of gaming. Now, with all of that said, you tell me, was this video helpful? Are you going to get an OLED TV regardless of what I just said? Let me know in the comments below. And if this is the kind of content you love, please subscribe and we'll have more for you. Until next time, stop the FOMO.